Hello there everybody and welcome. This video has been sponsored by Pathia Games. I'm gonna do here a quick review and a kind of a deeper overview of the features of the game Let's School. We're gonna talk in the first part of the video about all the bigger sections of the game to give you a quick introduction. In part two I will go a little bit deeper into detail and in part three I'll give you my personal summary why i like this game and why why i really really recommend it for you if you like this kind of game so let's get started first up with the parts of the game obviously since this is a school simulator we have to teach our students well you build the classrooms there you set up their courses you manage the teachers and you also manage the communities where the students come from. You gotta make sure that they graduate, so you have to teach them the proper things. Every kind of student from different communities wants to graduate in different uh, aspects, and you gotta wake up your students from time to time. There's little interactions with them as well. The building part is everything around the campus, obviously, inside and outside. You get to build the buildings, you get to build the amenities, be it toilets or cleaning utensils and all those things. Interesting about that is that you have a lot of freedom in height. This game has eight floors for you to work with. And of course, you get to expand your territory by building on new tiles. The game also has, of course, a research system, which allows you to unlock new courses, new buildings, new features for your staff. Lots of little goodies that I'm going to talk in part two a little bit more in detail. Economy works in this game quite simple. We sell food and we sell other little things to the students and we earn money by letting our students graduate successfully. This helps us to build the campus and this is the way that you earn money. It's a pretty slick and uh, easy implemented system where you end up with a decent income all over the uh, time without feeling too much like you're waiting on something or anything. So. We also have a adventuring aspect. After some time, you also unlock the map part where you get to adventure through the neighborhood of your school. The more unlocks you have, the more you can experience here. And this is also where you find the new communities for new pupils. So there's little mini events, little things that you can discover there. There's also a inventory for the school's headmaster, which is basically your protagonist. There's little shops, little dits and dats, which splice up the game and make it feel less like only a management simulation, but more also like uh, more of an RPG style, which I really appreciate. It spices up the gameplay quite nicely. We also have a very deep management game here. So you have to manage the total bulk of bureaucracy in this game in form of management points. You have to manage your staff, you have to manage your students, and you also have to work against these little pesky things like cleanliness, temperature management, and all those little things. So the management part of the game is what brings you constantly into trouble, which stresses people out if you don't put, uh, make it perfect. And I gotta say, it is pretty tough to make it perfect. You also get to train your staff and there's a lot of little things that you can work with. So I really appreciated this over the board because it is for me as an experienced player in this genre still quite challenging. So all in all, this culminates in a path to victory. You get to unlock larger levels of your school in forms of uh, achievement points, but there's also three different paths to victory. So you can either win by making the most beautiful school, the biggest school, or the most prestigious school. This is cool because it emphasizes different play styles. And if you love to grow big, you have a play style. If you love to build the fanciest school out there, you have a play style. Or if you like to min max and tweak for the best outcome, you also have a play style. So this really, really feels nice and it comforts the play styles of many different people. So let's move on over to the more detailed parts i want to talk a little bit more about how these things work because all the systems that i was talking about now in the quick summary are really deep well made and it surprised me how many things there are that i didn't even notice in the first time so let's talk about teaching real quick so your students they 
are in your school for three years. So after three years in your school, they graduate and then the cycle begins anew. You get to select from which um, neighborhood you pick them up and the neighborhood determines what kind of courses they want to learn and how demanding these are. You start out with Mudford, which is how the name implies, a very poor and not too demanding area. And over the course of the time while you explore the world, you will find more demanding and more interesting neighborhoods which will require from you to get your stuff a little bit better together. You are also in charge of the courses. You've got to check out that your students pass, that the teachers are well up to the task, that their skills in teaching are good enough, their skills in management are good enough, because guess what? If the class is too large, you have to have nice management skills. It's really realistic in that aspect, and getting your teachers up to the task is a really, really tough job that sounds easy at first, but the sum of the moving parts makes it really challenging, and before you know it, somebody's having a mental breakdown, and you have to pat them on the head and tell them that everything is really going to be okay, and convince them to not be locked in the toilet anymore. That just happened. I didn't make this up. That's something that can happen. The management part of the game, while we're at it, is about the personnel management, like I said. The interesting part here is that every building that you set up every facility has a management weight that means somebody has to take care of the cafeteria somebody has to take care of the men's and women's uh, bathrooms and all those things this is abstractly depicted by management points and you have to work on the management skills because if the managers are incapable the the weight of these increases the cost in terms of management points and you have to get yourself offices together to do all that management you start out with a headmaster's office then you can build yourself more managers departments and the larger your school grows the larger of a bureaucracy bulkhead you will have and that is very realistic and pretty nice on top of that you have to manage the training of your teachers which is also pretty nicely made because your teachers have so to say a learning ceiling when you recruit them they uh, you know there's good teachers bad teachers and amazing teachers and uh, their training proficiency basically defines their ceiling so you will have to work hard to get the best teachers i really like this so far and part of from that you also have to manage your buildings in terms of all the little things that your school wants be it cleanliness fire protection sanitational things, entertainment, washing service. There's a lot of little uh, services that you have to take care for. And it's a little, it's, it's another layer of the management mini game. The economy part, like I said, is selling things. The real fun part is that you get to select what kind of things are being sold. And depending on the seasons, some items are better or worse. You get to unlock extra foodstuffs over the course of the technology tree. So there's a little bit of a tweaking and um, refining in that regard. Also, the higher the quality of the room in terms of internal furniture, the higher the sales price so you can really optimize your income that way quite nicely or you just do your job as a uh, headmaster of a school well and get paid for all the achievements every graduated uh, student gives you a extra reward or every past exam gives you another reward so all in all you don't I didn't feel with this game like I had to struggle for my money but I have to ration my money each season so the building aspect is really cool. You have to build rooms like here in forms of facilities. The real nice part here is they can be moved. So the cafeteria that I built here can be moved anywhere. So this is really pressure free. Every built thing in this game can be moved for free. You don't have to worry about things where you place them down. So I like this a lot about the management aspect. When you're deeper in the game, you also are allowed to just copy rooms, which is also very, very helpful. And due to the fact that you can build amazingly large things, this is really, really fun. Also, you get to do a lot of environmental playing. So if you are one of these players who love to go for bigger things, 
or for building bigger things, this is just the game for you. So, as you might have noticed, there's a bit of a fire here. You have to manage fire as well. <laughs> so, the research here, while our brave teachers are quenching that fire, the research tree works as follows. You have these three branches, and they unlock new facilities, new things that you can build inside the campus. And, as one thing that I really enjoyed, the technologies which unlock new courses also unlock new furnitures for your classrooms and over the course of the time you get to build specialized classrooms and your school grows more and more modern the more things you unlock here the tech tree might look small at the first glance but the wonderful part about it is every little technology here is quite meaningful and has an impact on the game and every little th little one of these things does mean something. This tech tree isn't bloated with unnecessary things. And before I knew it, I realized that every one of these techs also unlocks a lot of different things, more than you would assume. It's much deeper than it looks at the first glance. And just to give you a little tip here on the on the on the way, don't delay the research of the more advanced courses too long. You will need them. The adventuring part plays mostly here on this map. You get to send your classes on field trips to unlock these areas. And while the classes are on field trip, they do their studying quite uh, uh, normal. That's pretty nice, so you have no drawbacks here. And sometimes you will have a mini pop-up about the adventures that they have there. They're really adorably written, and I really, really enjoyed myself doing these. And as a reward, you unlock what's inside these areas be it new communities, be it new shops where you can sell things, or other schools that you can interact with as well, because there's also sort of a diplomacy uh, system here. You can't even trade with these schools over the course of the time. The adventuring system is something which I really enjoyed. It's a spicing up of this whole game, and it unlocks the more technologies you go for, namely the school reforms, just in case you're looking for it in your set file. Okay, now we've went over most of the game. There's still a lot of little things that I haven't found time here, so you have the staff recruitment game and lots of little things. I don't want to spoiler, and I don't want to bloat this little review here. Let's move on to my summary. This game is deep, much deeper than it looks like at the first glance. This is something I really enjoyed about it, but I know Pathia for making really cool games in this department and having an eye for the detail. So I really gotta say, there's a lot behind this. And due to the fact that you get to play in various playstyles, the victory goals couldn't be more different in terms of um, goals that you have while you're building your school. There's something for everybody in it. That's why I really, uh, what I really, really enjoy, because for me personally, for example, it would be a total nightmare to have to go for the population victory. I don't like to have to manage two huge complexes. Since I don't like that, I could go instead for a teaching victory, which is much more about building a smaller and high quality campus. That is really, really cool. There's also a lot of things to do. I ended up playing this game quite often at one time speed because I, I just had to do that training and that research and then this teacher had a mental breakdown and I had to train him well and there was also this department that I had to build. Also my management was quite terribly imbalanced and while this all looks really really easy at the first glance while well, you're like yeah okay that ain't much but there are so many moving tiles that uh, moving parts I want to say that it really really is a wonderful gaming experience because the tasks aren't terribly hard to solve, but it's a nice juggling act to not get overwhelmed by the some of the tasks. It's super easy to build too fast, too large, and break down under the weight of that. And there's a lot of nice challenges in this game, which I really, really like in this genre, because one of the hardest things in this genre to pull off is that you're not growing bored while you're looking at your thing that you're building while it grows. And this doesn't happen with this game at all. I really always had something to do. And if everything in the school is running nicely, you will soon have either the urge to slip into the 
roll of your handmaster. I really, really love this. You can move your guy on your own. Or you want to go into the scenery mode and enjoy your campus. Or you just plan where you will build your next expansion and where you will build the classrooms for that next community that you will unlock. And in short terms, this game is wonderful if you like simulation games and the like. It's really well made. It looks like it's super easy at the first glance, but uh, the more you play it, the more challenging it goes. But the wonderful part about it is, as long as you move in small steps and carefully, it's really actually feeling super easy. It's up to you how much of a challenge you would put onto your desk. And that is something what I call really good game development. So that's all I have to say. I hope you guys have uh, a nice impression about the game. I really, really enjoy that one. And I can't wait to play this more and dish out the guides and the review uh, and the tutorials you guys know from my side. So, thanks for watching. Drop me your comments down below. Let me know what you think or if you have any questions, ask away. Leave a thumbs up if you'd appreciated the, the, the video. And of course, consider subscribing. I'd be delighted to have you. So, have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and see you soon.